Join Kids Hat Family. Never tell a lie. Ah, here is my favorite red nail paint. This will go perfectly with my outfit today. Let me take a shower first and get ready. Wow, this color is so beautiful. I will paint an apple today with this. My friends will be so happy seeing my painting. <laughs> I kept it right here. Where is it? Oh, how can I misplace my favorite nail paint? Tofu? Have you seen my red nail paint? I can't find it. I kept it on my bed. Mm, no. What are you talking about? I was in the living room completing my art homework. I have no idea about your nail paint. Hmm. I will teach him a lesson now since he lied to me. Oh, where is my painting? How will I show it to my friends and teachers? Maybe God punished me for stealing Tia's nail paint. Poor Tofu. He didn't know he lied and hurt me for his joy. Can I come in? I want to give you something. Yes, please. Come in. What is it? I'm sorry. I picked up your nail paint while you were in the shower. Actually, the color looked so beautiful and I wanted to paint a red apple for my homework with this. I knew it when I saw the red nail paint in the living room. I remained quiet because I wanted you to realize your mistake and so I took your painting. I'm happy that you understand I was heartbroken as it was my favorite nail paint. If you ever want to borrow anything from anyone, you should always ask for permission first. This is what good manners are. Always say, may I borrow your stuff please? If the person says yes, then only you should take it. I understood my mistake when my painting went missing. I will always ask for permission, Tia, before borrowing anything from anybody. Please forgive me. It's okay, Tofu. You're a good boy. And you understand things very quickly. Good Habits, Bad Habits Hi, Tia. I'm home. Hi, Tofu. You know, Tia, I'm so tired today. We played hockey at school. You want some water, Tofu? Yes, please, Tia. <coughs> tofu, is this where you keep the glass? Uh, I'm sorry, Tia, I didn't notice. I'm going to my room to change. Okay, lunch is ready. Come to the dining room in half an hour. Alright, Tia. Here, we have some beans for you. Thanks, Tia. So, how was school today? It was good, but I feel a little tired after the hockey match. Okay, why don't you take a nap for an hour? Yes, you are right, Tia. I think I should take a nap now. Tofu, please keep your plate in the kitchen. <sighs> I'm very sleepy, Tia. I'll see you after an hour. 
What's wrong with this boy? Tofu, wake up! Let me sleep for five minutes more, dear. Okay, enough. I will teach him a lesson now. Oh my God, dear! What have you done to the house? What a mess! Tia, please stop. What are you doing? Tia! Yes, Tofu. What is it? Tia, will you stop doing this? What's wrong with you? You are doing the same thing too. Look at your room. It's an absolute mess. Uh, I'm sorry. I did not realize that it looked so unpleasant until I saw your belongings all over the place. It looks so messy and unorganized. I will keep my things in place now. That's what I was trying to teach you, Tofu. One bad habit often spoils a dozen good ones. Learn to stay organized and you yourself will feel good. Apart from that, you can adopt small good habits like holding the door open for someone, sneezing with your mouth covered, washing your hands before eating and always keeping track of time. Because once you catch hold of a bad habit, it develops deeper. I get it now, Tia. I will take care of all the things that you just told me. Thank you for making me understand this. Tofu, wake up. It's time to go to school. But Tia, the school bus arrives at 8 a.m. Tofu, don't you remember? You have to go to a school picnic today. The school bus will arrive a little early today for that. School picnic! Oh yes, I forgot about it. But can I sleep for five minutes more, Tia, please? You will miss the bus, Tofu. Come on, get up. Okay. Tofu, please hurry up. You're wasting your time. You will not be able to make it to the school picnic otherwise. I still have half an hour to catch the bus, Tia. Tofu, time management is very important to achieve things in life. Now what does that mean, Tia? I'll tell you a quick story as you get ready. Okay. Time is precious. Once upon a time, a boy named Oliver went for a hiking trip with a group of other people. Oliver wasted a lot of time and hence he missed a lot of things always. Boys, let's go or we'll miss the beautiful sunset at the top of the mountain. Yes, yes sir, let's go. Ah, uh, Coach, I need some time to get ready. You should have been ready by now, Oliver. Come back fast, we're waiting for you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Oliver, please hurry up. You're wasting your time and everybody else's time too. We can't wait for you anymore. I'm here. Let's go. Everybody is climbing the mountain while Oliver is lagging behind as he's wasting his time. Where is Oliver? I can't see him. Coach, he's resting there. Oliver, hurry up. Oliver gets up and walks towards the group slowly. Everybody starts moving too, as they are assured Oliver is behind them. As everybody is climbing the mountain, Oliver loses track of the group again because he was wasting his time. He starts panicking as he was lost. He somehow finds his way and reaches the top of the mountain. But when he reaches, the sun had already set and everybody was walking down the mountain. Everybody else looked so happy as they had watched such a beautiful sunset 
but Oliver starts crying as he missed it. Time is precious. It waits for no one. Once you start managing your time correctly, you will achieve a lot of beautiful things in life. That was a great story, Tia. I will manage my time and make it to the picnic. Yes, Tofu. Now come fast or you will miss your school bus. I'm so bored today. Do you want to play a game? It is a game called Would You Rather. I will give you a choice between two things and you can choose one. Okay, let's play. Cool. So would you rather always be 10 minutes late or 20 minutes early? Hmm, 20 minutes early. Good choice. Now your turn. Would you rather be rich or witty? That's easy. Witty. What? Why would you not choose money? Well, your wit can help you survive any situation, master. The Ass's Brains Once upon a time, a lion lived in the jungle. He had a witty fox as an advisor. He would advise the lion on all the matters. I am very tired today. We need to find an easy prey today. I have an idea, master. I will go to the ass and set him up as an easy prey for you. Okay, go ahead. The fox went to the ass and gave him a proposal. I have come with a proposal from the king of the jungle, the lion. He wants to invite you to be friends with him. A royal friendship? Wow, it would be my pleasure. What do I have to do? Just come with me to meet the king. Okay, let's go. The fox led the ass to the cave where the lion was waiting for them. As soon as he saw the ass, he pounced on her and killed her. Good job, fox. But now I'm very tired. I will sleep for some time before eating. Stand guard of dead ass and make sure you do not eat anything from it till I have eaten. Yes, master. I will wait for you. The lion went to sleep, leaving the fox watching over his prey. Many hours passed, but the lion did not wake up. The fox was now very hungry and couldn't wait for his master anymore. I am so hungry. What if I have a tiny piece of the prey before master comes back? Quickly, the fox ate up the brains of the ass. He had just finished eating when the lion came back. What is this? Where are the brains of the ass? Did you eat them? Didn't I tell you not to eat anything till I come back? Yes, master. And I have followed your instructions. I haven't eaten anything. The ass just didn't have any brains and that is why she fell in our trap so easily. Hearing the clever fox's reply, the lion calmed down and forgave the fox. Ah, the witty fox saved himself from the lion's wrath. Yes, that is why wit is so important. It can get you out of any trouble. I agree. Good choice, Tia. Tia? I want to buy that robot. But Tofu, you already have two of them. I want the red one too. I have a blue and a black robot. Well, aren't two enough for you Tofu? Please Tia, I won't go home if you don't buy me the toy robot. Stop behaving so stubborn Tofu. You remind me of Karen from the story The Red Shoes. Who's Karen? The Red Shoes Once upon a time, in a far away village, there lived a little girl named Karen. She lived with her mother in a small cottage. Karen was a cheerful girl full of curiosity. She was very close to her mother and would often ask her questions about little things. Mother. Where does the light on earth come from? It's the sun, 
that emits light on earth dear Karen and her mother were very poor so Karen just had one dress a rugged doll and a single pair of wooden shoes that her mother made for her the wooden shoes that she wore were very uncomfortable but she had nothing else to wear one day Karen's mother fell sick so Karen went to the town to buy essentials for her mother on the way she found a pair of red shoes lying on the roadside the shoes looked so glossy and beautiful that Karen couldn't help but take them she picked the shoes up and went home to show them to her mother mother look what i found and these shoes just gorgeous oh dear where did you get these shoes from i found them on the roadside i want to keep them karen these shoes may belong to someone else you should go and keep them where you found them at once someone must have dropped them by mistake you cannot take things that belong to others no mother these are my shoes now i found them karen that's not a good thing to do stop being so stubborn i don't care mother i want these shoes karen i want you to promise me that you won't wear these shoes i may not be wealthy enough to buy you a pair of new shoes but i don't want you to wear someone else's shoes either karen sadly promises her mother and slides the shoes under her bed days go by and one day karen's sick mother passes away the next day karen puts on the pair of red shoes and attends her mother's funeral nobody could take their eyes off karen's bright red shoes and they start gossiping about it that how disrespectful the little girl was but karen loved the bright red shoes and did not care about what people said after some time an old woman passed by in her wealthy carriage she stopped by and learnt that the poor little girl was an orphan now the old woman pitied the little girl and wanted to adopt her oh dear i would love to have this pretty little girl with me i promise i will take good care of her and provide her with the best life and so karen went away with the old woman and started living her new life in the lovely mansion dear you've been wearing these red shoes since the day of your mother's funeral you must take them off now They are all rugged and dirty. I promise I will buy you a pair of better shoes than these. No, I love my red shoes. Karen, don't be so stubborn. I'll buy better shoes for you than these. Disheartened Karen throws away the pair of red shoes since she did not want to upset the old woman who had been so kind to adopt her and give her a wealthy life. A few days passed by and Karen was playing in her room with her new toys. She wore a beautiful new dress too. The old woman entered with a gift box. Karen opened it happily and found a new pair of blue shoes. She became very angry and threw the box away. I don't want these blue shoes. They are so ugly. I want the same pair of red shoes that I had. Take them away at once. Oh, Karen, stop being so stubborn. These shoes look better than those ugly red ones. Karen becomes so stubborn with each passing day that she had no idea that she was hurting the old woman's feelings. Karen always missed her red shoes and years later She grew up to be a beautiful young lady but her stubborn attitude remained the same even when the old lady did whatever she could to make her happy. She often bought her gifts 
but Karen liked nothing but the red shoes. The old woman puts a bowl of salad for Karen to eat, but she pushes the bowl away. Who on earth eats salad? I want a burger. Make me a burger. The old woman sadly takes away the plate of salad that she made with love for Karen and cooks her a burger. She takes it to her room where Karen is putting on her blue shoes. See, these don't even fit me anymore. I have grown up now and I need new shoes and clothes. And so the old lady and Karen go to the market. Karen spots the beautiful red shoes when they stop by at a shop. Oh my! These are just like the pair of red shoes that I had. I want to buy these. Oh dear, we should buy something more formal that is suitable for all occasions. We should buy the black ones instead. I will either buy the red shoes or both. That's it. Oh Karen, when will you stop being so stubborn? And so the old lady counts her pennies and buys both the red and the black pair of shoes for Karen. She goes home happily. There comes a day when they had to attend another funeral. Karen, please put on the black shoes. I don't want people talking ill about you. Don't worry, I will. Karen goes and puts on the red shoes thinking nobody would notice it under her long dress. They go on and attend the funeral. While at the cemetery, a gushing wind blows and lifts up Karen's dress, exposing the pair of glossy red shoes. The crowd is in awe and they start gossiping about how disrespectful Karen's shoes were for a funeral. Karen, you have left no stone unturned at being stubborn. I love my red shoes. I don't care about the world. A young lad comes by and praises Karen's choice of shoes and tells her how beautiful she was. Hello, miss. You are unbelievably beautiful. And oh, your shoes are so gorgeous too. Would you like to join me for a dance at the palace tonight? I would love to. As Karen jumps with excitement, her feet just couldn't stop dancing. She danced and danced away into the woods. The young lad chased her but couldn't catch up with her speed. She spun and spun all the way until she was dizzy. Two days passed by and Karen just couldn't stop dancing. She drifted away into the woods and danced until her feet became sore and struck with thorns. Her red shoes turned rugged and dirty but she just couldn't stop herself. Oh please, stop! I can't dance anymore. I feel so tired and dizzy. Enough! I promise I won't be so stubborn. And as she said these words, the red shoes popped out of her feet and Karen fell to the ground. She gained all her strength and walked barefoot to her way home after two days straight. As soon as she saw the old woman, she ran into her arms and started sobbing. I'm so sorry. I promise I won't be so stubborn anymore. I have realized my mistake. Oh dear, oh my little girl, I'm glad you are home safe and sound. The young prince had been looking for you everywhere. Suddenly, the young prince approaches their doorstep. Oh Karen, there you are. I've been looking for you since days. They embrace each other and the prince goes down on his knees and proposes to marry Karen. She jumps with delight and says, yes. Karen leaves her stubbornness behind and turns into a responsible, humble and a beautiful princess thereafter. Wow, this was a wonderful story, Tia. I promise 
I won't be stubborn anymore. I have learned my lesson. That's great, Tofu. For your favorite rhymes, stories, and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.